Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Cancer in January 2021. What is going on, Cancer? How are you guys doing? I hope that you are doing well. Cancer, welcome to the new year. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Hopefully, wherever you are in this world right now, Cancer, you're safe, happy, healthy, and secure. Uh, please continue to take very good care of yourselves and those that you know and love. 2020 is behind us. It's over. But at the same time, a lot of the things that we were dealing with, a lot of the difficulties that we were dealing with certainly haven't stopped just because it's, you know, uh, uh, 2021 now. So again, uh, wherever you are, please take care of yourselves. Please take care of those that you know and love. And, you know, let's ride this thing out and, and, and get to a better time and place. Okay. Uh, but anyway... Uh, hopefully, Cancer, uh, if you did celebrate the New Year, again, hopefully you did so with all the precautions in place, but uh, hopefully it was a good time for you. Happy holidays also, or happy uh, whatever you were doing in December, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Solstice, whatever you were doing, I hope it was great, okay? Uh, new Year, so new you, new me, new this, new that. Uh, I'm doing things slightly differently for the general uh, overviews for each zodiac. Uh, we're doing a little bit off camera. We'll do a little bit on camera. We're still going to get a six card spread, uh, bottom of the deck energy outcome and all that good stuff. We're just going to get to that information a little bit differently, okay? Uh, so let's just go ahead and get the regular spiel out here. Cancer, anything you want from me, it's in the description box. Timestamp is down there if you want to use it. Information on how to purchase a personal reading with me is down there. Um, I would suggest if you're interested in thinking about it to do so sooner rather than later because those prices are going to change i'm assuming i'll do it probably around march so if you're interested in working with me uh look over what's down there and and book a reading as soon as possible uh before the price changes and if you're interested in following me on instagram that information is also down there there's a link to the page if you want to give me a follow okay all right cancer let's do this let's look at what haps has happened here uh, all your <laughs> I can't can't even talk now little tongue tied with you guys what's up with that um all the cards that i pre-shuffled came out face up for you so you have the ace of pentacles in reverse prince of swords air sign energy gemini libra aquarius could be dealing with an air sign but you don't have to be and the six of wands so cancers i get I, you know i gotta be honest i feel like something is is a no I'm getting like a lot of no from this Ace of Pentacles in reverse. Um, could be coming from you, could be coming from another person. Uh, Prince of Swords, by the way, also is uh, equivalent to the Knight of Swords in other decks. Um, like a no-go, no-pass-go, no-collect $200. It's just a stoppage or a rejection is coming through with this Ace of Pentacles in the reverse. Could be coming from this person, the Prince of Swords. They don't have to be an air sign. They don't have to be male. But uh, it, it could be that somewhere in your story, Cancer, there could have been an offer of stability, an offer of tangible, real, yet kind of slow or pragmatic something or other with the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. And because of the natural demeanor of the Prince of Swords. Again, doesn't have to be an air sign, but the the quality that someone was presenting or, or vibing with currently has been a go, go, go. Um, not really interested in being slow or slowed down or fixed, like stuck in a place or, or focused on something, right? So I get the sense of like mismatch. Not that either side of this is good or bad or, you know, if, if, if the Ace of Pentacles is good, then the Prince of Swords is bad. If the Prince of Swords is good, then the Ace of Pentacles is bad. No, I think it's just a matter of different values, right? Different priorities, maybe. Um, and different outlooks or different approaches, you know. Someone may have asked, hey, Ace of Pentacles, I'm in to this business proposal. I'm into this opportunity. I'm into this, even if, like something nice and fun. It could have been like, let's plan a vacation. Let's plan a party. Let's, you know, whatever. It's, it's something that needs to be worked on and agreed upon and or is also rooted in the material, right? So again, a business opportunity, something practical in terms of like a project, something fun in terms of, again, like a vacation or a party. But it's like you got to give to it. It's not 
going to be handed to you. You have to work with it, right? So again, this idea of like a partnership or, 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 or an opportunity. And I get the sense that it was nice. The You know, all aces tend to be nice. They tend to be desirable in some senses. But overall, I feel the response of someone is to dodge it. To maybe take for granted because pentacles are also stable and firm predictable like we can count on pentacles it's earthbound energy right so it's not it's not easily changeable it's not easily uh, it doesn't disappear easily there you go and someone might have taken that for granted what i'm feeling here is this prince of swords whether the Ace of Pentacles is presented by a person, by the universe, by, you know, serendipity, whatever. I feel that this Prince of Swords is kind of like not aware that it's, it has a time limit, right? Or, frankly, was just like, no, nah, I'm not really into it. There's something about the quality, the, the, the details of what was here that the Knight of Swords is like, I'll pass, not interested much more interested in their own whatever is stimulating them at this time because this book you know in 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 very you know uh, uh on its face interpretations this could be somebody who's just like really into what they're studying into what they're learning into what they're you know reading about whatever but i think it's more of whatever catches this person's attention whether that be self-made or, or self-contained or, or perpetuated uh, like a hobby, you know, or whether it's other people or other relationships or other opportunities, whatever. This person feels and behaves as if they have the pick of the litter or that there's no time limit to having to take this offer. That's sort of the misperception of the ace of pentacles is that it will always be there other aces especially ace of swords and ace of wands and even sometimes the ace of cups we can discern like we kind of know mm, i gotta strike while the iron is hot here because it presents something firm tangible stable secure those are all things that kind of make us think long term right so just to use this, and I'm only using this as an example. I'm not sensing this is the main story, but let's say it was legit a proposal, a wedding proposal, a marriage proposal, a wedding proposal, a marriage proposal, excuse me. And someone doesn't immediately say yes. They say, oh, I got to think about it, or I think we should really, you know, work on our relationship, blah, 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 blah. Over time, that offer is going to dry up. But because it's serious, you know, most people propose, I shouldn't say most people, lots of people, <laughs> when they propose, they're serious because of what it, what it entails. I'm asking for a lifetime commitment from you or with you or whatever, right? That's a long time. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to make this offer lightly. Therefore, it also means it's not going to go away because it's serious. That could be what this person is thinking because it's such a serious, heavy, weighted offer I can take my time or I can go focus on other things that catch my fancy that you know I'm more interested in at this moment and then come circle back around and take up this offer at a later date no that's not true that's not true this is what this person is thinking six of wands in the back of their mind because you know the six of wands sits behind him so in the back of their minds they're thinking okay not right now but when I'm ready when I'm ready, I'll take that offer. Ignorantly, no offense to anybody, but ignorantly thinking that's just the way things work. Now, Six of Wands on its face, again, does speak to success. So let me go ahead and, you know, counteract myself or contradict myself in a way. It could still go that way. This person still could come back around, take this offer, whether it be for marriage or anything else. It could be, again, a business proposal, an opportunity to invest, whatever. They could come back and find some type of success, but that's kind of their arrogance. They're already thinking that way. It's not a guarantee because I feel this opportunity 
this Ace of Pentacles is attached to another person or other people. So this person, though, they don't take into consideration that the other people involved, how, however many people there are, whoever it may be, they don't take into account that things could change. Because again, we perceive pentacles as being unchanging. They're, they they represent physical items or anything to do with our physical material world. They're not easily changed or it's not overnight, right? There will be some sign, there will be like something that you know, gives hints you or gives you a clue. Thank you. <laughs> gives you a clue, gives you a hint that says, oh, this offer might be depleting or this offer might disappear soon. Right. So this person, again, arrogantly thinks when I'm ready, it'll be there. Now, I'm talking about offers and opportunities. In many of your cases, Cancer, this is a long standing relationship you have with a person, friend, family, lover, otherwise. And this Prince of Swords, Knight of Swords, comes and goes in and out of your life. I don't care who they are. I don't care what type of relationship that this is. And they do this because they know, ignorantly or arrogantly, they believe that when they want to come back, they will be granted access. And I told you one of the first things that I got when we started this reading was a no. So maybe it's not the Prince of Swords rejecting the offer. It could be that the person or the place or the people that originally offered now take it off the table. So this could be simply you telling a friend back in 2005, I'll always be there for you. They, they think you legit mean that. And they've been in and out of your life as a friend, in and out of your life as a lover or, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend, girl, whatever. They've been in and out of your life and you've accepted that. And that has conditioned this person, for good or for worse, to be thinking, hey, when I'm ready to come back, I'll be allowed entry. I feel that this person might catch a rude awakening and they will find, oh no, you're not allowed back in. But you said in 2005 that you'd always be there and then the door would always be open. Things change. And again, pentacles. Things change. Every, every element in the tarot has the ability to change, but the pentacles changes the slowest. Doesn't mean it never changes. It just takes a long time to get there. So, uh, let's see what else happens here. Three additional cards for this situation for cancers, please. Show me three additional cards pertaining to this situation. More information for cancer in January, 2021. <sighs> One more, please. No, that's the one. Thank you. Now notice, I mean, I didn't shuffle live on camera for you, but they legit all came face up. And now this pile, this, this group of three has come face down. Very interesting. So wheel of fortune. That's right. Six of cups. Absolutely. Six of swords. Absolutely. It's changing. Wow. Absolutely. I don't know how many times I have to say it. Six, six, six. Yes. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Ooh. Woo woo woo. I think we'll address the six the triple six first. Okay. Three sixes. Six of wands, six of swords, six of cups. Three sixes. Six six six. That's a synchronicity number. That's that's a um an angel number is what some people call it. Sixes are about challenges. <laughs> Not challenges, excuse me. Stabilization, stabling, balance, things like that. Um Cancer, this feels like a recalibration, a re a, a realignment for you, for them, for whoever, right? Things are not what they used to be because fives equal change and six is implementing the change or reacting to the change, recalibrating, restabilizing, getting situated again, creating a new foundation or a new balance in the situation, okay? So that's where the sixes come in. Now, six of swords, six of cups, yes. And, and the wheel of fortune. Wheel of fortune, secondary major for, don't blank, Sagittarius, thank you. Could be dealing with the Sagittarius, you don't have to be. I feel many of you mm -hmm, resonate heavily with what I'm about to say. Look at me, I'm saying you're gonna resonate with what I say. You don't have to, okay? It's all up to your reinterpretation and your own discernment. But the six of cups, I just said it. 
you have known this person for a long time, friend, family member, even a lover, even an ex-partner, whatever, and you feel bound to this person, kindred to them, dare I say, soulmate. <laughs> I'm being a little facetious because I've talked a lot about soulmates in different readings today, and I'm going to give you the caveat that I've been doing probably since the early stages of this channel. Soulmates are not number one, always the most positive sunshine and rainbows experience in your life. Sometimes it's a little overcast. Sometimes it's a little grayscale like we see here on this card. It's not that it's the worst thing ever, but it's certainly not all it's cracked up to be. That is not what I, <laughs> that is not what it looked like on TV. Okay. <laughs> that is not what the brochure said it was supposed to be. So I challenge people, especially if you work with me or you're going to watch me regularly. I might talk to you about a soulmate relationship, but I'm not going to tell you that that relationship or any other soulmate relationship is always going to be cookie cutter and nice and pretty with rainbows and sunshine and, and sprinkles on top. No. And the second thing about a soulmate relationship is that it is not always romantic. Okay. It can be platonic, it can be familial love that you share with a person. It doesn't have to be romantic love, okay? Um, and the overreaching element or, or, or quality, mm, why am I not getting my words right? The, the overarching me message for me when I talk about soulmates is that they are here if you have them to experience, first of all, we all do, whether we recognize them as soulmates or not is a different story or how we label them is a different story. But these are the relationships that help you grow. These are the people that you incarnate with, that you come down here with, and you both set up a plan. We're going to meet, we're going to do X, Y, Z, and out of that, hopefully we will learn blah, blah, blah. We will experience this and that. We will have gained that thing or this thing or this experience or this insight, blah, 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 blah. It's all purposeful, which I, again, I know a lot of people are like, but this is crap. What am I learning from having a not so fun relationship? Plenty. You learn in plenty. Let me tell you. So six of cups, I feel cancer. You guys are attached to someone. I feel a lot of you, it's family. Others of you, it is a friend, like a longtime friend or an ex who now is your friend or a friend or someone who was a friend, then you became an ex, then you went back to friendship, whatever. There's this reciprocal energy or, well, yeah, reciprocal is in you both do this dance. You know, you take a step forward, they take a step back. They take a step forward, you take a step back. It takes two to tango, right? So you're doing some type of cosmic spiritual dance with one, each, one another, some soulful dance with one another, right? That's the reciprocated part. Nobody's doing one thing and the other person's just totally receiving it. You both give to it. You both take from this connection. Okay. But, uh, what I meant to initially say was it's nostalgic. It's familiar. So even if you haven't known this person a long time, I think most of you have known this person a long time, but even if they're a recent person in your life, last few weeks, last few months, last few years, they feel as if you've known them a long time. It's like, again, that spiritual recognition. It's like, I know you from somewhere. I've never seen you a day in my life in the, in this current, uh, current lifetime. But you know, I, I, I feel you, I know you, right? And that familiarity is, I don't want to say it's the problem. I think it factors into what you're here to learn. This is very deep for a general. I think many of you cancers, you purposely have been made a soulmate with this person because one, you were born into the same family. So you've known each other the majority of your lives, right? Or two, you know, as friends, you've known each other since like kindergarten or some shit like that, or as old souls, old familiars, right? You've known each other from different lifetimes before. That is a part of your challenge as soulmates together. I don't know what you're meant to do with that. I don't know what your what what the lesson is is distilled in there for you, but I think that's the purpose. I think that's the purpose. The familiarity is the purpose or or part of the purpose, I should say. Part of, okay? Um Also look again going back to this offer that's just going to sit around and somebody's just like, ah, I'll get to it when I get to it. Or when I'm, when I'm good and ready, I'll come back. Right. Look at the, uh, look at the face on the woman. Oh, geez. Now it doesn't want to freaking look at her face. 
he's he's doting on her, this guy, and giving her a kiss on the cheek or whatever. He's like, oh, I care about you, and ma, 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 we're, you know, blah, 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 we're good friends, or we're soulmates, or whatever. And she's like, yeah, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. She's distracted. She's, like, off thinking about something else. And maybe that's the point. Or, or again, part of the purpose. There's one side who's, in a sense, dedicated, loyal, dialed into what this is. And the other side, the other person, is kind of like off dreaming about something else. Or, have again, their attention is where they want it to be. If this person wanted to give you attention, they would. But that's not their priority right now. So what do you do with that? Lessons. Interesting. Lessons. Wheel of Fortune. Now, Wheel of Fortune on its own isn't necessarily the card of lessons, but I think we can learn lessons because it represents cycles. It represents things that kind of work for us like clockwork. Again, this person, like clockwork. You can predict when they're going to come, when they're going to go. Right? Like clockwork. So there's something, there's a lesson in the repetition. There's something for you to learn from this person or and or the connection you have with them that keeps coming back over and over and over again. And again, it doesn't even have to be they're a bad person. Let me let me go ahead and add something here that that again would add to sort of the struggle or the complexity is perhaps this is a pretty good person. They don't come into your life and wreck it. They don't show up on your doorstep and is like, hey, it's me, your best friend since kindergarten. I'm here to wreck your shit. No, they might come bearing gifts. They might come bringing pleasant experiences. But the fact that they're in uh, unstable, the fact that they are not here present and giving to the situation on a consistent basis that's the trouble so it's like this being happy or contented or conditioned into that feeling despite the instability or the lack of structure or the lack of being enticed by structure because that's the other thing aces are opportunities they're offers they're chances there's a chance and an offer for stability and somebody's like, mm, I'm not really interested in that. And who is meant to learn something? Here? Look, I'm not going to go into that. But that's what it feels like. So this could be someone that's in your life. Going back to that original thing that I said about a proposal. This could be about receiving or giving an, a marriage proposal, but it's regularly pushed to the side. Or outwardly challenged because this person they really think a lot whoever this is they're in their head a lot or they have their perspective might change often so they might say yes and then they say no they might say no initially and then they go back and he's like well i thought about well maybe we could do this or if they do it they want it to be unconventional wheel of fortune expansive unconventional Re mm. Revolutionary is a little bit more Aquarian, but I do feel like there's new information that's absorbed or brought to the table. So this person might say, yeah, let's get married, comma, but, and then they say something that they want to be present in the marriage that you are not necessarily on board with. Does that make sense? And just to use this as an example, because it's, I feel, probably the most obvious thing that is unconventional. This could be, okay, we can get married, but let's have an open marriage. I'm not here to judge whether that's good or bad. I, I really don't have a dog in that fight. I ain't married. <laughs> and if I was, I don't know. But that is immediately not what marriage has traditionally for the past several thousand years, you know, or hundreds of years maybe, has been about two people, particularly men and wife, okay. But at this stage, two people who say we're committed and ain't nobody else involved in our shit, right? They, this person might say, I'm down with that, comma, but let's see other people in a sexual way. Or what if I fall in love with someone else? I don't want to lose you. I want them too. Whatever. 
again, I'm not here to judge whether that's right or wrong because I think it's, I don't really think it's, I don't think that's an answer. I don't think there is an answer to that. Okay. Um, not a universal one, at least. Uh, <laughs> so that's what I mean. Now, six of swords. Oh, I didn't do that. I put this down. Bottom of the deck. I just thought of it. Nine of wands. Mm. My bad. I should have pulled that out when I stopped shuffling for these bottom three. Now, six of swords. <sighs> Traditionally, can talk about moving on. Can talk about letting go of what no longer serves. Letting go of what has been destabilizing, has been haphazard, has been a disturbance to recalibrate, refocus, and get aligned once more, right? That's here. I mean, this guy is striking a very, very strong, I'm assuming this is some type of dancer or yoga pose. I'm not physically able to do this, so I don't know what it is. But anyway, um, yeah, I just feel that there's Possibly a need to reconnect or reestablish principles, thoughts, beliefs, because this is swords, right? So these are things that we value intellectually. What, what supports our mental well-being, right? In some cases, again, what supports our principles? I don't want to say morals because it's not really about morals. It's about principles. What's the principle? Right? So being in touch with and paying attention to our own principles or establishing them as a unit. This Six of Swords, as opposed to other decks, other depictions, feels a little bit more quote unquote workable. Meaning, I feel some of you Cancers possibly because of the direct influence of this person might consider, am I being too rigid or vice versa? You could be, you know, the person you're dealing with cancer, they're, they're the rigid one. And you're like, come on, let's just do this more open-ended or let's, let's expand on this wheel of fortune. Right? So I think this is a challenge. I think this is a, uh, that could be, that's interesting. They put this into my mind that for some of you, this could be the ending of a soul contract. That that really applies for those where maybe some of you have a series of lifetimes with one person or one soul. It's not necessarily the person that you see, but the soul that inhabits their body. And this could be the ending of that bond. Or the branching away from each other. Something like that. So... I still stand by what I said about the triple six and, and sixes following fives and how there is some change and there is some recalibration. And I'm assuming, I mean, I'm not technically minded, I'm not mechanically minded, but I'm assuming sometimes when you recalibrate things, you end up tossing what is no longer usable, what is no longer valuable or, or viable, right? When you recalibrate something, you know, because all parts have to go together, right? And some of you, you might be finding... <laughs> for lack of a better phrase, that your parts don't go together anymore, okay? The overall energy was the Nine of Wands. So this to me feels like tried and true, being dedicated, being loyal, being... Hmm... Strong beyond beyond a limit. Like taking something beyond its limit. This is a very like... I feel this is stronger than what is... Your, your message, Cancer, for many of you is deeper than what I can get into for this general because for some of you like i said this is friendship 
others' family, others' love relationships, others' maybe even business relationships. For some, this is someone who's brand new to you. For others of you, you've known this person over several lifetimes or the majority of this lifetime. So you're all bringing different energy here, different specifics here that I can't pull, I can't talk about each and every one of them. But the overall feeling is again, putting in more than is necessary past the limit. What your limit is, is different than the, the other cancer who's like, you know, two blocks away from you. You get what I mean? So your limit might be, mm, nine weeks somebody else's limit nine years you get what i mean so it's all different for each of you but i think there's something to be said about how it, it feels commendable like if you feel or someone else feels they would be giving up here if they stuck to their principles or if they change their principles don't view it that way view it as growth view it as uh, the opportunity to learn about yourself something like that okay What's the outcome here, please, for Cancer in January? One card of an outcome, and then we're done with this reading. For Cancer, what is the outcome? One card of an outcome for the reading, please, for Cancers. Thank you. The Magician. Perfect. So this is, I feel... Looking over everything, looking over yourself, looking over the relationship and how you intersect and all that stuff. And, you know, they're giving me this idea of creating a new reality. I don't know what that is because that can be, that can be deceptive, creating a new reality. Because what is a magician? Like a magician is someone who performs tricks and fools you into thinking that something is when it really isn't right pull a coin out from your ear it wasn't ever back there pull a rabbit out of a hat it was never in that fucking hat you get what i mean so i'm cautious to say that i'm a hundred percent behind this as your outcome because i feel like it's someone stitching themselves into a situation when maybe they shouldn't or trying to create a reality that does not exist okay um, in a, in a, in a more balanced interpretation, this feels like, <sighs> like utilizing the tools to take care of yourself, to, 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 to set yourself on the right path or put yourself, point yourself in the right direction, you know? There's a chance that this magician energy is self-manipulation, self-deception. In other cases, it's applying reality, taking what reality shows, and then recreating from that. And unlike other readings where I feel cancer, uh, other readings I've done uh, over the several, <laughs> several hundred that I've done, where... I usually am feeling that someone sets up firm boundaries and starts to say no, even though that's still there because of what I said in the beginning. I feel here it's sort of like safeguarding the self more than saying no, creating a protective barrier around the self. So it could be accepting and I don't necessarily listen this is what it feels like so this is either what you might be deciding to do or what your energy is sort of permeating i'm not going to say that this person should leave my life but when they do their roundabout in and out rotating door bullshit right i'm not going to get caught up in their storm i'm not going to get caught up in their fervor they can come they can go but it's not going to shake me that's what it, okay there it is so instead of saying no don't come back because again, for some of you, this person is delightful. They're pleasant. They don't, you know, hurt you in, in intentionally. And they're generally a good person. But that instability of their presence is what upsets you. And if that's how they are, spiritually speaking, if that's how they're hardwired, then what do you do? You have to sort of devoid yourself or detach yourself, safeguard yourself, from being destabled by them, by the coming and going. 
So this recalibration could be all for the self. It has nothing to do with the other person. So they come in, they come out, they come in, they come out, right? It's not being bothered by it and, and enjoying them when they're here and still enjoying your life when they're gone. Does that make sense? Cancer, that is your reading for January. Um, interesting, very interesting reading. Um, if this resonated, please leave a like. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. I love reading your guys' comments and, and let me know how it resonates for you. That'd be super cool. And if you haven't considered subscribing, friends, why not consider subscribing now? That'd be extra, extra cool. <laughs> uh, doing any and all of those things would help me as a reader here on the channel. So if you want to support me in, 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 in and everything that I do here, feel free to interact with the channel. Uh, and if you guys want to get at me for a personal reading, again, the information is down in the description box, okay? Cancer, I'll be back in a few weeks' time to do the mid-January January readings, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, so until then, then, oh my God, I can't even talk. Until then, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Take care.